Would one of you that are in here do me a favor and send me a message in the chat? Awesome. Thank you, Logan. Okay, we're going to wait till two o'clock when everybody gets in. So hopefully people keep joining us here. I'm going to wait another minute or two, make sure people get on here. So just bear with us for a second.
Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. If people join in, then that's great. Um, and just bear with me since this is my first time. Let me know if there are any questions. Um, if you haven't read this, I would appreciate, I think I set it to where microphones are off, but feel free to turn yours back on if you have a question to interrupt me. Um, or feel free to post in the chat. I do have the chat pulled up on a separate device so I can see it while I'm um, going through all of this stuff on my computer. Um, and I guess I could have just done this real quick to say hi, but hi everyone, if you can see me, there you go. But um, just so you know that I am here. Okay, we are going to get started with this. Um, I'm essentially gonna go through the topics that are right here, which, um, for purposes of this are all of the topics that are on the quiz tomorrow um, and very similar type questions to what's gonna be on the quiz tomorrow. I will take this document and save it and post it on Google Classroom so that you guys can use this tomorrow. You can just have it pulled up on the side um, next to your quiz as you're going through it um, and use it to help you out with that. Um, but please let me know if there's any other questions. Okay, so if we get started here, help if I had my um, board on. Um, but if we get started here, the first question is about parabola features. And there's essentially four different types of questions um, that can be asked. Hold on one sec. Okay. Um, sorry, I've got two devices and so I'm hearing myself play back here. That's okay, I'll ignore. Okay, um, so if you have a problem like this right here, um, use the graph, determine the coordinates of the vertex of the parabola is the question that's come up here. So vertex is the big idea right there. Um, if we see this word vertex, we're just looking for the vertex. Hopefully most of you feel pretty good about this, but you're looking for this minimum or maximum point of the parabola. Um, in this case, your vertex is at the point negative one, negative nine. And so you would just recognize that point as your vertex, okay, pretty simply. Um, using the graph, determine the coordinates of the x-intercepts. So if you see the x-intercepts of the parabola, we're looking at the x-axis, which is our horizontal axis here, and where the parabola intercepts it. So we've got one here. So we have an x-intercept of negative four, and we have one here, which gives us an x-intercept of two, okay? Um, also a y-intercept, so the last question was about a y-intercept of the parabola. So y-intercept, y-axis is the vertical axis. Where does it intercept it? It's at negative eight. So my y-intercept in this case is at negative eight. Now the last thing um, that it asks is to determine the roots of the parabola. So here's the first thing, and I'm gonna highlight some stuff through this um, note, but if I ask for the x-intercepts, if you see the word roots, or you see the word zeros, these all mean the exact same thing. So I've actually already done that right now. Hopefully you can kind of think through what it's going to be then. But if I see any of these things, it's the exact same thing. So these, if I'm answering the roots or the zeros, are these two answers again. Okay, so anytime you see those, they're the exact same thing um, as you go through it. Okay, again, if there's any questions, feel free to jump over to the chat feature and let me know. Um, and I can always jump back to one of these. So if I go beyond and you're still stuck on it, let me know and I can come back to it. Um, we can go from there or I can come back at the very end too, okay? So parabola A value is the next one. Um, I went ahead and grabbed a question from Delta Math. And so these are gonna be very similar to the questions for the quiz tomorrow. Um, assuming all parabolas are of the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus d. So this right here is standard form, okay? And if we're looking at standard form here, the number in front of the x squared is your a term, the number in front of the x is your b, and the number by itself is your c. So they're essentially saying this number in front of the x is my a, which is the same a that we have all been dealing with, okay? And what do I know um, about that a value is the question here. Sorry, I've got a few people entering this, so I'm trying to keep you guys updated. Okay, um, so a values, okay? I know that if A is positive, that the graph is going to open up, okay, or be concave up. I know that if A is negative, that the graph is going to open down or be concave down, okay. Then I also know that if the 
absolute value of A, so ignoring the negative or positive, okay, is greater than one, then the graph is going to be narrow. So if that A value is a two, a three, a four, anything like that, it's going to be narrow. I also know that if this absolute value of A is essentially less than one, so between zero and one, since an absolute value is always positive, okay, then I know that this is going to be a wider graph. Okay, so this is my high, if I'm highlighting stuff as I go through that, this is my highlight for um, this section here is all of this stuff. I should change that color for from now on. Um, so that's all of the stuff that we want to remember when we come back to this later on. And if I answer this question, hopefully you're looking at it and you're like, okay, one of them looks totally different. This one right here is facing down. The only one that it can go with is the negative. So those two go together. The question is which one of these goes with this A value. It has nothing to do with the vertex where this point is or this point is. Okay, It has nothing to do with the x-intercepts where these two points are. It has nothing to do with the y-intercepts. It's all about the concavity and how big or how small this is. So since this value is between zero and one, it's gonna be a wide graph, this one is going to go here, and then that leaves the one right here. So that's based on your parabola's A values. Um, again, just checking participants and everything here as we go. Okay, I think we're all okay. Um, so if we keep going, then standard form, um, and again, I'm checking the chat feature, so feel free to send something if you need to. Standard form coefficients. Okay, so what this says is what equation best matches the graph below. Um, and the question really for this one is what are we getting out of standard, standard form coefficients? So standard form is y equals what we just saw, ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, and what does this form gives us? Well, the a value gives you the up or down and everything that we just talked about. So wide or narrow. And the C value gives you the y-intercept. Okay, so those are the things that you need to know off of standard form. And if I'm going to highlight something, it's going to be this right here because that will apply to every question. So how do I apply that to this specific problem? Well, I look down here and I see all of my standard form. So my A values are either a positive 2 or a negative 2. So I'm going to look at this and it's, since it's concave up, it's facing up, I know I can get rid of the negative one. So I know it's not this one and it's not this one. Okay. Then I'm going to look at the y-intercept. So my y-intercept is right here, is at three. So I'm going to go through and all of the numbers that are by themselves, that's correct, but this is not. And if I look at what I've crossed off, there is only one answer left, and that is this guy right here. Okay, so that's standard form coefficients. Um, if I keep moving on to intercept form coefficients, okay, again, we're looking at intercept form. So what is intercept form? It's y equals a times x minus m times x minus n. Don't worry so much about the fact that it's an m and an n as much as what does all of this mean. So the a value is giving us our up or down and then our narrow or wide. Hopefully my board stops acting up here. Um, and then these are giving me my x-intercepts. So my m and my n are my x-intercepts. We're going to talk more about that a little bit later. Okay, actually, we'll get into it here. So, a value is going up, but if I look at every one of these a values, okay, they're all 0 0.6. I don't care about how wide, but I care about the negative versus positive. This is going up, so I'm going to get rid of my negatives. Okay, so I'm down to only two possibilities here. Now, my x intercept, okay, I'm actually going to go down here to the bottom to figure this out. My x intercept, if it's x minus one, is positive one. My x intercept, if it's x minus two, is positive two. It's the opposite of what you see. My x-intercept if it's x plus one is negative one, and my x-intercept for x plus two is negative two. Why these numbers? Because each of these numbers make their parentheses equal to zero. Okay, what do I mean by that? If you take this one and you put it in for x, one minus one is zero. You take this two, put it in for x, two minus two is zero. Negative two in for x, negative two plus two is zero, and so on and so forth. So if I look at these, my x-intercepts are on the negatives, and therefore my answer goes here, okay? So again, what am I highlighting from this is what's up here, and then I applied it to a problem with what's down here, okay? Vertex form coefficients. So which equation best matches the graph below? Again, what I'm looking at here is I have a bunch of vertex form, um, and what matches up? 
So in this one, all of my A values are actually the same. So that's not going to come into um, effect here, but we're going to see some other stuff here. So Y equals A times X minus H squared plus K is vertex form. Again, you have your A value that tells you either up or down, and then your wide or narrow. And then you have your H and your K value that are telling you your vertex, which is at the point H comma K. It's always going to be the opposite of what you see in the parentheses and the same as the outside. Right? So if I'm looking at these, my vertex on this graph is that point right there, is at negative one, negative six. Okay, so if I'm looking through these, I'm not keeping the negative ones. This is the biggest mistake that happens, okay? If I want this to be negative one, this is gonna read X minus negative one, which is X plus one. I wanna keep the plus ones. I'm gonna get rid of this one and get rid of this one. And then my Y value is negative six. So I want a negative six over here. I don't want that, I don't want that. And it only leaves one option, okay? Now I'm gonna pause there for about 30 seconds. If anybody has a question, head to the chat and ask, because um, I've gone over five different topics there. You can see them on your screen, um, so you can refer to them. But again, I'll give you about 30 seconds here. Send me a chat if you have a question. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions. If I'm missing somebody again, feel free to unmute yourself and yell at me if I'm doing something wrong. You guys know how I am, so feel free to interrupt me. Um, but we'll keep going otherwise. So graphing parabolas, um, and this is what you guys had a whole assignment on. So some of you are done with it, which clearly means you got it, and some of you aren't. So I'm gonna go over a few different things here. Um, and these are gonna feed into everything that we're doing um, after that too. So when you are graphing parabolas, you have a few options of what to do. I'm sorry, having technical difficulties, there we go. Um, here's my function, okay? It does say that I have to graph the vertex and the roots. So I'm gonna go about this in a specific way. That doesn't mean you can't go about it another way, okay? So if I have x squared minus 10x plus 16, I have two options. I can either work on finding the new forms to figure out the points, okay, of the equation. Okay, or I can work on a table of values. Okay, and you can use either one of these options as you go through this. Okay, if I talk about new forms, okay, this first form that we have y equals x squared minus 10x plus 16 is my standard form and it gives me my y intercept to be 16. Doesn't help me with graphing because I can't put a point at 16 on this graph. Okay, so my next form I could do is I can do factored form. Okay, so factored form, and again, I'll go over this more in depth in just a little bit. The factored form I look at, it's a trinomial, it has an A value of one. So I put X times X makes the X squared. What makes 16 multiplies the 16 and adds to 10. So you have one times 16, two times eight, three doesn't work, and four times four. Of these numbers, how can I make 10? It's with a two and an eight, and I need a negative two and a negative eight. Now this means that my x-intercepts are at a positive two and a positive eight. I'll put an and sign in there. So a positive two and a positive eight, okay? X-intercepts, so I can put those in. I can put a point on two and a point on eight on the x-axis, okay? You also need your vertex. So to find your vertex from what you have here, you can complete the square. I could do y equals, I'm going all the way back to standard form, x squared, minus 10x plus blank plus 16 minus blank. So reason I do this, we go way back to the beginning of what we did here, is I wanna complete the square here because I wanna be able to factor this. So the way that I do that, so that I have something times itself squared, okay, it's gonna be x minus five because negative five and negative five makes negative 10. So then what's this number? It's negative five times negative five is a positive 25. And that's what forces me to subtract 25 to have this equation still equal, okay? 
So I just factored this into the x minus 5 squared. And all I have to do is realize that I have this positive 16 and negative 25 that makes a negative 9. And so my vertex form is right there, which tells me that my vertex is positive 5, negative 9. So if I'm going to put that point in, I can go to positive 5, negative 9 and put a point. Um, and then your problem here is that it wants another point. So it needs five points. You can just use a table of values. My suggestion would be use the point three. You know it's kind of close to the two and the two came out to a number of zero, um, a y value of zero, whatever you want to do. But I am going to work through a table of values here. So I'm not going to do that point right now. Okay. So if I move on to the table of values, okay, there's a little bit of a trick to this if you want to. It means I'm making an x and y table to figure out, okay, where am I putting these points? Okay, and I am going to be reviewing um, these points as well in this table. Okay, there is a trick to this though, and that is you want to find your vertex. So at this point, you have to realize I haven't done any of this work over here. Okay, how do I get that this vertex is at five negative nine? Okay, well, if you're looking at this function up here, okay, of x squared minus 10x plus 16, this is in standard form. And I'm going to give you a little trick here that we didn't necessarily learn in class, although I went over it with quite a few of you, um, which x equals the opposite of b over 2a is actually a equation that will find the x value of your vertex. Okay, so if I'm highlighting something on here, I'm going to actually highlight that um, and the idea that I'm doing new forms or versus a table. So if I'm following this, what this means, okay, my b value is negative 10. So the opposite of B is a positive 10 over two times A. My A value is the one that is imagined in front of the X squared. So two times one is two and 10 divided by two is five. Okay, now we had already found this vertex. So you know that that X value is five and that this is correct. But at that point, what you do is you say, okay, that's five. And then you just work with some numbers that are close to five. So I'm gonna work, cause I'd prefer not to use bigger numbers. I'm gonna work down. I'm gonna go four, three, two, one, and look at kind of those sets of numbers, okay? So again, picking the values that you're gonna do here just has to be strategic. I do it based on my vertex, okay? Once you've done that, all you do is you plug this number into the equation and solve. And so I'm gonna use a calculator to do this one, but I'm going to do five squared minus 10 times five plus 16. Again, all I did right here was put the value, the x value of five in for each of these x's, okay? And then I'm going to solve this, and that's gonna come out to negative nine. Again, you would use a calculator for this right here, okay? You would do the same thing with four. So, so you put the four in for the x position, which is gonna look like this, four squared minus 10 times four plus 16, okay? And that's gonna come out to negative eight. So that actually gives me another point. Okay, so four, negative eight is a point. So I can go to four, negative eight, and put a point, which remember, as long as it's not the vertex, actually gives you two points. So the um, axis of symmetry in this one, the symmetry is going to be this direction here. So I can go on the other side of the vertex at negative eight and put a point as well. And right now you're gonna see that there's one, two, three, four, five points, but based on table of values right now, I've only actually done two, slash three points here, okay? So you would need to keep going. What you're gonna find is that when you plug in three, you don't get to your roots. And if you come back up here, it said five points, including the roots. So it would force you to solve one extra problem real quick. I'm just gonna skip over the three and go to the two. So that means I would solve two squared minus 10 times two plus 16. And that is going to solve out um, to give me my two value of zero. Okay, so then two, zero. And then again, that's one, two, three units to the side of the axis of symmetry. So I go one, two, three units on the other side. And then you just have to draw this in, which this is going to be real rough. Um, but that's what it's going to look like. Okay, so again, when you get into graphing parabolas, that's what you're looking at there. Um, and that's probably the trickiest one. It'll probably take the longest amount of time. Um, but I would suggest getting a piece of paper out when you do that for the quiz and doing it on a piece of paper. Okay. Um, okay, let's take another 30 seconds here because that was a lot. Go to a chat if you need to ask me a question.
Okay, we'll go ahead and keep going on. Um, these last few should go a little bit quicker because we've kind of gone over the ideas, but I know that there were um, a few people asking how to switch between the forms. So that's what these are going over. Um, so we have determined the x-intercepts of the following equation. Um, and essentially this is factored form from, uh, or finding the intercepts from factored form. So this right here that you look at is factored form. Now I know it doesn't look like it compared to what we've been doing, but it is a y equals, and it has two sets of parentheses or two binomials. Um, and that's factored form. So what that's telling you is that whatever makes, um, so to find x-intercept, okay, what we know is we know that our y value is equal to zero, okay? So if you set your y value equal to zero, um, then you can solve for your x-intercepts, okay? So what I'm doing here is I'm making this zero. So if I have x minus two times negative x minus four equal to zero, the question is how do I get that equal to zero? Okay, well, what you do in order to get two things to multiply together equal to zero, either the first or the second have to be equal to zero. So what we're going to do right now is just set both of them individually equal to zero. So the first thing, x minus two, set it equal to zero. If you add two to both sides to solve this equation, you end up with x is equal to two. So you know that that's one of your answers. You solve the second one. So negative x minus four equal to zero. You add four to both sides. You get negative x is equal to four. You've got to get rid of this negative. So you can divide by negative one, you can multiply by negative one, whatever you want to do, but you end up with x is equal to negative four, okay? So the reason that you don't want to have that idea in your head that it's always the opposite of what you see is a lot of you will think this is positive two and positive four, and that is not correct. Okay, so you see the two and the negative four that we got out of this. Um, now the trick is, okay, we're done with the eights that are here. Um, we're done with the two and the positive four. We understand that, but which one of these is it? So what you have to remind yourself is these are X intercepts. So these are X values with a Y value of zero. Okay, so X values with a Y value of zero, and that is your answer. Um, on that exact same question, it actually asked you to determine the y-intercept from factored form. Okay, now if it asks you for the y-intercept, you have to remember that your x value is equal to zero. So this one's actually a little bit easier, but it just requires you to catch the dash for a y-intercept. Now maybe right away you want to do this. You want to say, okay, wait, that's an x value, that's an x value, that's an x value. If I can cross all of those out and those aren't my x-intercepts. Okay, what I am going to do is I'm going to put x in a zero. So I'm going to just here, I'm going to say zero plus three times zero minus five is equal to y. And for this one, you just have to solve. Order of operations here, parentheses goes first. So zero plus three is three. There's a multiplication sign in here. Zero minus five is negative five. And if you multiply those together, you end up with negative 15. So your y value is negative 15, and that gives you your y-intercept. Okay, now we're moving forms here. So to go from standard, oh, I'm gonna back up just a second because I've been highlighting stuff and I'm trying to do that. So x-intercepts, you set y equal to zero, y-intercepts, you set x equal to zero is what you're seeing there. To go from standard to vertex form, you essentially wanna remember that you are completing the square. So I'm going to highlight that idea. Um, and you're gonna to remember to complete the square to go from those forms. So completing the square, what we are doing, technical difficulties again, bear with me. We are gonna make this work, I promise. Okay, there you go. Um, so to complete the square, to rewrite this quadratic function in vertex form, I am going to write y equals, it's the x squared plus the seven x plus blank that I need to do. I need to make this a perfect square trinomial, okay? But I still have that plus two. And in order to add something to an equation, I also have to subtract the same thing from the equation, okay? So to figure out what I am going to add to that equation, this little piece right here, okay, I essentially do my C value, that's this value right here, 
is b divided by two quantity squared. So I'm just showing you that because that's what you need to complete the square. So you've got some information there that may help you um, and we can go from there. So in this case, this is seven divided by two squared. And some of you get a little bit stuck on that, okay? Um, so it's 3.5 squared. We've got um, 49 divided by four um, that we're looking at here. A lot of you like to deal with that in decimals. So if we are, I'm gonna talk about it as 12.25. So I'll fill this in here as 12.25 and 12.25 here. Okay. Now, remember we're trying to make it in vertex form. That's the end goal here. So this right here should be able to, what's in parentheses, should be able to be written as a parentheses squared and then plus or minus a number. So this parentheses is gonna be x plus. So the x squared would be x times x. The positive seven require a plus. And this number is the same thing going to add to itself to get seven. Well, half of seven is 3.5 or seven halves. Okay. And then if I add this two and this negative 12.25 together, I get a negative 10.25. For those of you not following the math, potentially, put it in a calculator. Okay. There's nothing wrong with that at this point if you're um, doing that in a calculator. But that would be your answer that you would type in um, for the first question. Um, I do have two questions here. Um, and just looking at this second question is the idea of could you type it in and then could you identify the vertex, okay? So I gave an extra one just to go through it fairly quickly here. Um, y equals x squared plus 6x plus blank minus 3 minus blank. You figure out what um, fills that in. You're going to do 6 divided by 2 quantity squared, which is a 9, okay? Um, perfect square trinomial here, factors into x plus three quantity squared. Negative three and negative nine makes negative 12. And so what you're gonna fill in here is what I just wrote there. And your vertex is gonna be negative three, negative 12. Okay, so that's standard to vertex form. If we go vertex to standard form, okay, it's just the idea of multiply it out. Okay, so multiply everything out there. Um, and that's all that you have to do, maybe, to go vertex to standard form. Um, to multiply out here, I'm going to look at the fact that x plus 4 squared is not x squared plus 16. So this I'm going to write as 6 times x plus 4 times x plus 4, and then plus 2. My suggestion is you do the x plus 4 times x plus 4 first. So x times x is x squared. x times 4 is 4x. Um, 4 times x is 4x, and 4 times 4 is 16. Combine your like terms here. So I have x squared plus 8x plus 16. Okay. Realize that right now this is only what was in these two parentheses. Okay. So we still need to multiply all of that by 6 and then add 2 on the end. Okay, so distribute the 6 through here. You're going to get 6x squared plus 48x um, plus 96. And again, you still have that plus 2. So combine like terms, you get 6x squared plus 48x plus 98. And I'm going to put a y equals in there because we should have that. Okay, so that is your standard form. This would be your answer. The standard form is all multiplied out. No parentheses left. Okay. Um, standard to factored form is all about your factoring. Um, and you've had a few different questions of factoring with this. We didn't actually put it in there as standard to factored form, um, but there's factoring problems. So if we're looking at this and having to factor, I notice this is a trinomial. Okay, trinomial is what multiplies to the last number. Okay, so I need things that multiply to this and then adds to three. Okay, so you can go through your whole list. Hopefully you get a little bit better at this as you go though. And I know that seven times 10 makes negative or makes 70 to get the negative and the positive three, I can do a negative seven and a positive 10. Okay, so still multiplies to negative 70 and adds to three. The way that you write that is as two parentheses. The first thing is an X because X times X is X squared, okay? These two things have to multiply, so negative 7 and positive 10 to negative 70. And then you can check. I do have a negative 7x and a positive 10x. 
that makes positive 3x. Okay, so my answer here is that y equals x minus 7 times x plus 10. Um, the last one, so this is your x game. Um, the last one that you are going through here is factored to standard form. Again, this is multiply. Multiply it out. Okay. Um, again, going through trying to highlight these things so it'll catch your eye when I record this. Um, but we have this that we have to multiply out. Okay. Suggestion is that you do the parentheses first. So x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. Three negative 8 times x is negative 8x. And negative 8 times 3 is negative 24. So that gives me, if I combine like terms, x squared minus 5x minus 24. I have to remember I still had this negative 4 over here, so I need to multiply all of this by negative 4. And that's going to give me y equals negative 4x squared plus 20x. Again, I'm multiplying this through. Negative 4 times x squared, negative 4 times negative 5x, and negative 4 times negative 24 plus 96. Okay, that is standard form, no parentheses left over, it's multiplied out. Okay, so that is everything for the quiz um, wise. I have had a lot of questions on Khan Academy, so I did um, take these, even though I've gone over all the concepts, I did take these and do Khan Academy specific questions. So that's gonna be the last thing um, that I cover here. I'm gonna pause again for about 30 seconds, give you guys a chance to um, get on the chat if you have a question for me, and then otherwise I'll do the Khan Academies and then give you some more time to ask questions. Okay, let's go ahead and do the Khan Academy specific question. So we've gone over all these ideas. It's the matter of pulling out what do I need to do, okay? So the first question here is this uh, something over here is what are the zeros? So when I see this idea of what are the zeros, okay, I want to think of x-intercepts, which should make me think of factored form, okay? So what I need to do is I need to find factored form for this. So this one right here to factor it is going to be two sets of parentheses. In this case, technically, it's a t. If you put an x, it's not the end of the world. But it's going to be two t's times each other. And I need to find what multiplies to negative 42 and adds. In this case, it's a negative 1. Okay. So for 42, it's going to end up being a 6 times a 7. And in this case, it's going to be a positive 6 and a negative 7. Now, the problem a lot of you are going to have is if you're not writing notes, you get stuck here. Because you think that your two zeros are 6 and 7, negative 7 but that's not true. This is my factored form, which means if I want this to be equal to zero, my zero is actually negative six, and my zero is actually positive seven. So make sure you realize that. Now, all they're doing here, and I got a lot of questions about this, is which one of these is bigger and which one's smaller? So since they're a negative and a positive is fairly easy, this is negative six, this is positive seven. So I'm going to go through all, all of these questions with the zeros first, okay? So if I look at the zeros here, again, x-intercept factored form, well, this one ends up being in factored form already, okay? So this one is already in factored form. Um, just writing myself that note so that you guys can see it if you look at the notes here, okay? Um, and I'm just saying, okay, what's going to make this equal to zero? And that one's going to end up being a positive five. And what's going to make the second binomial equal to zero, and that's going to be a positive 13. Again, you have to enter them in the correct place. So the smaller of those two is five, the bigger one is 13. Remember, if they are both negative, um, for instance, negative nine and negative seven, negative nine is actually smaller than negative seven. Okay, so we have those. Um, now, on this last one here, to do zeros from vertex form, what you would actually do is multiply it out to standard form and then factor it. This one happens to have a decimal on it, so I'm actually going to tell you to do something um, slightly different, and um, that is to go to Desmos to graph it and to figure those out. Um, I'm not going to take it um, to Desmos right now, but essentially what it's going to come out to, the zeros, the x-intercepts, I can on the graph see they're, they're at 6.5 and 21.5, okay? 
Um, so if you get into a Khan Academy that's like that, go graph it, find those axis intercepts. Okay. Um, how do you find the vertex? Okay, well, the vertex is um, in this case over here. If I have standard form, I'm going to use that little bit of a trick, um, which is that it's going to be x equals um, the opposite of b over 2a to find the x value of the vertex. Okay, so the opposite of b. So b is a negative one here. The opposite of that is positive one. And a is also a positive one. So two times one is two. So that makes the x value of the vertex one half or 0 0.5. Okay, again, I'm going through all of the x values first. Okay, find the x value of the vertex here. If it is in factored form, to find the x value of the vertex, find the middle of the two zeros. So we already found these to be the two zeros. Find the middle of the zeros. And if you actually think about what I'm doing here, I could have done it over here. The middle of negative six and seven is also one half. Okay, but the middle of the two zeros would be I'd take five plus 13 and divide that by two. So five plus 13 is 18, divided by two is nine. So the x value of my vertex is nine. Okay, I'm still staying with these top two questions. I still need my y value of the vertex. And this just goes back to having a table of values. So when you have a table of values, you have an x value then you just plug it in to solve for the y value. Okay, so that's the same thing here. I'm gonna plug in 0 0.5. So I'm gonna solve 0 0.5 squared minus 0 0.5 minus 42. So all I did was I took this function and plugged that in. Okay, now I'm gonna use a calculator for this and it's gonna come out to negative 42.25. Okay, so that's my y value. Do the same thing here. Take this nine, plug it into this equation. So it's gonna be a negative. If you want to say a negative one in the beginning, that's what this is, times, put in the x, so nine minus five times nine minus 13. Okay, so then we have a negative one times nine minus five through the parentheses first is four times nine minus 13 is a negative four. Two negatives makes a positive, one times four times four is 16, and so that's my y value there. The last one, if it's in vertex form, this should be your easiest one, but that your vertex is the opposite of what you see here. So a positive 14 and the same as what you see here. So a negative 56.25. Okay. Hopefully that helps a little bit for the features of quadratic functions. Again, I will um, screenshot this and or, um, give you a copy of this. <clears throat> okay, the last one um, that I had questions on was the comparing quadratic functions, okay? How many roots do the functions have in common? Which function has a greater maximum? Do the functions have the same concavity? Those were the kind of questions. So notice there are two things. There's a function given to you, and then there's a graph given to you in each one of these. So they each have a function and a graph, and that's what you're comparing between. Those are not the same functions, okay? So do they have the same roots in common? What we're looking at here is this is x-intercepts, okay? So on the function, if I talk x-intercepts, I have to think factored form. So I need to imagine this as factored form, which means I'm going to put two parentheses, binomials, put an x in the beginning because x times x is x squared, find two things that multiply to negative 5 and add to negative 4, okay? You're going to end up with negative 5 and positive 1, and realize then that my x-intercepts in this case are positive 5 and negative 1, the opposites of what you see there. The x-intercepts here on the graph are a positive 2 and a positive 5. Okay. The question is then going to ask, and I didn't cover the questions in here, um, is if they have both of them in common, the one in common, whatever. In this case, they have one x-intercept in common. Okay, so you could go through and you could, or one root in common, um, and you could guess that answer there. But it is multiple choice, so you should be able to go through those. The second one here, greater maximum. So when you see the maximum or minimum, you want it to think vertex, okay? Luckily, this first one's in vertex form. So the vertex is, whoa, technical difficulties. Hold on a second. Let's try that again. Um, the vertex is negative four and then positive eight, okay? The vertex on this one, is at negative eight and positive eight. Again, I'm just reading it off, negative eight, positive eight. Okay, and the maximum, so if you think about maximum, you're going up and down is based on the y value. So I'm looking at the y value and the y value of that, and they happen to be the same, 
Okay, so the answer for this one of which one has a greater maximum, it would have had a choice that the maximum is the same. And you would choose that one. Um, lastly, do the functions have the same concavity? So concavity is based on the A value. This is the very first thing we went over. So if it's up or down and if it's wide or narrow. Um, so the concavity to this one, um, up or down, wide or narrow that we're looking at here is that both of these are going up. This one because it's face up. So that's an up. And this one because this number is positive means that it is also concave up. And so this one, you would have said that they were both the same and both up, okay? Would have been the choice that you picked there. Okay, I will pause here for a little bit to see if there's any questions, but otherwise feel free to sign off. Um, but if you do have a question, don't hesitate to unmute yourself and ask the question or to go to the chat feature and send me a question. <laughs> 